also because you're having fun, you actually find different angles you haven't seen before. You can actually add bits which are a little bit out of left field, which makes you know your whoever's doing reading the assignment think, well, that's really innovative. That's really interesting. I mean, if it's fun for them, because I used to be a school teacher, you know, having to mark papers, 30, 60, 100 papers, this psychology. You know, if someone has said something interesting. Psychologically, I mean, you're not supposed to do this as an exam, the marketing, you will actually mark it up. Simply because, you know, the, you made the examiner happy. And this is true, you know, that somebody's going to read your work in the examinations, and if your work is like, is it even neat? You're not supposed to actually mark up for neatness, but if it's neat and easy to understand, and even you put a joke in it. <laughs> I've done that before when I was, <laughs> when I was actually doing exam, put a joke in it. Because you know, the examiner thinks, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> that puts them in a good mood. You know, they can you know, give you sort of a first or an upper second or whatever of the grade is. And actually, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I'll put them up. So remember, this, people who examine your papers are human beings. <coughs> Use psychology on them too. It's what you Thank you for the quick advice. Okay, very good. Uh, I'm from Dipanga Architecture. Oh, architecture, um, oh, brilliant. Um, thank you. Um, my question is, what's the meaning of success if things are just so transient and it always change? Thank you. The meaning of success when things are so transient that just in that moment there is time between you know, your building is erected and the time it all falls down. Many, many people enjoyed it, admired it and have a wonderful time inside those buildings. Yeah, sure, it's transient, just like your life is transient. So the meaning of life is not birth or death, it's what happens in between. Yeah, even a relationship. You know, you sort of find a nice partner in life, and eventually you separate death or divorce, and one or other is going to separate you. But it doesn't mean you don't have a relationship. It's what a wonderful time we've had. It is transient. I love giving the simile of concerts. Do you like music? If you go to a concert, yeah, it's transient. It only lasts an hour, two hours. I don't know how lucky you are. When I was a student, we used to have these all-night concerts. I don't know if any of you like rock music. One of the best concerts I ever went to as a student, it was uh, two hours of Doors, then two hours of Jefferson Airplane, another two hours of Doors, another two hours of Jefferson Airplane. This is some of the best rock bands in the 60s and 70s. So eight hours of some of the best rock music at the time. It was brilliant. I'll never forget that. But you know, it ended. Even though it was transient, it didn't mean I wasn't going to go again. So life like a concert. You go into these relationships, into these jobs, into these many lives, knowing it's going to end. That's not the reason. It's what you do after it starts and before it ends. That's where you find the meaning of life. So build these amazing buildings. You know they're all going to fall apart. That's not the point. Remember that beautiful Tibetan tradition of making these sand mandalas? They make this spend so much effort and time, a lot of joy, making these beautiful diagrams out of coloured pieces of sand. When it's all finished, people enjoy it maybe for a few days in the museums or the auditoriums. And then they take it to the nearest river and throw it all away. What a beautiful expression of art that is. Don't keep it. If all the old masters say, and it should be old mistresses as well, some of the painters were women, if all them, why do they call them old masters? Anyway, all those old masters in the great museums, if they always take up wall space, there's no opportunity for new beauty to come into that museum. That's one of the problems. So every building, every work of art, should be put up there for the time being, be taken up, taken away for another beautiful work of art, another great concert, another wonderful moment to come into your life, because your mind is free from all the past moments. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, an silly question. Is yes. it time for autograph? <laughs> I brought your book. Yes, sure, I can autograph it. <laughs>
Okay. I would wrap everything except checks and IRAs. <laughs> Oh, that's over there. That's yeah, can I ask you a question? I have a friend that has schizophrenia anxiety, like ha hallucinating. Uh. Then uh, he keep on thinking about things that he never see or he will hear people talking to him. Uh, so yeah. schizophrenia? Yeah. Okay. And it's very serious. And we ask him to go and see a doctor. He doesn't want to see a doctor. And his condition is getting worse. He's now in army and he's being bullied by people because of his condition. So uh -huh. how can we help him? Okay, how you can help him out of compassion, please tell you know, the, his associates so the doctor can actually see him. Uh, because schizophrenia is a very common condition and it's very, it's not that hard to treat. And just by treating that condition, you know, it can actually be ameliorated. Uh, was it a couple of years ago, I came over here to Singapore, I think it was the 60th or 80th anniversary of the Institute of Mental Health in Singapore. So, you know, they used to call it the Woodlands Hospital, it's actually blue, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. And having given uh, the keynote there, that just afterwards, the one of the doctors, who was actually a Christian, they asked me, they were so impressed by the talk, can you come and bless my ward? That's great, we just know, forget it's Christian. Buddhist, Muslim stuff, truth is truth, love is love, so you know, take away all the ideology and we can actually have some common ground. So can I come and bless my ward? Yeah, sure. And so as I was walking there, I said, what ward is it? It was a schizophrenia ward. This was the head of the unit for schizophrenics. And I just asked the question in passing, how do you treat the schizophrenia in your ward? And he came up with this brilliant answer. He said, we don't treat schizophrenia in our ward. We treat the other part of the patient. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> Somebody's understood what I was talking about and understood psychology. Because look, if you focus on the schizophrenia, you'll find the schizophrenia will increase. Because that person's becoming a schizophrenic. There's no such thing as a schizophrenic. It's a person who has episodes of schizophrenia. There's another part of them. And if you actually focus on the fault, you find faults actually increase. The same psychology is if you keep focusing on your mistakes of the past, those mistakes will be repeated. So if you focus on the other side, the positive side of your life, you learn from successes, you become more successful. And it's, for that time anyway, he told me he was having tremendous success on cutting edge treatment for schizophrenia. Focus on the other part, make sure that person understands the other part and recognizes they're not always schizophrenic, the other part of themselves. Emphasize that, make that part more important. And basically, in a very loose way of saying, it squashes out schizophrenia. The other part starts to dominate. The time when they're hearing real voices, seeing real things, becomes more important to them than the time they have these illusions. And that's half the problem gone can be treated. But of course, the other part which, again, needs to do mental health, kept on saying, please don't stigmatize mental disabilities or mental ill health. The stigmatism is what is the biggest preventer of treatment. Ah, I've got schizophrenia. I'm, I'm sort of a failure. I'm a second class person, which means people don't look for help. Ah, I've got cancer, which means you don't go and look for the doctor. So, look, please don't stigmatize ill health, whether mental or physical. It's just part of life. And when we stop stigmatizing it, it means people like your friend will look upon that as, you know, they've got a cold. They'll go to the pharmacist to get some medicine. They've got schizophrenia. They see the doctor, you know, please give me something to overcome this. I can live a good life. You know, I'm depressed. And so you go and tell someone, before it gets that bad, you start thinking of suicide. Please don't stigmatize ill health or sickness. A good way of doing that, practical way, this is an old little trick I give in, whenever you give me a lecture, always involve people. I want you now to put up your hand if there's anyone in this room who's never been sick in your life. Is there anyone in this room who's had perfect health? Please be honest. 
So can I say, please put up your hand if you've been sick from time to time. Okay, 100%? Yep, 100%, okay. So, that means it's actually quite normal to be sick. In fact, if one of you put your hand up and you hadn't been sick, I'm sure the medic department in NUS would have you in their rooms for study. Because <laughs> that would be very abnormal that someone you know, has lived 20, 30 years, 40 years of life, has never had a sickness. There would be something very wrong with you if you hadn't been sick. So isn't it right that you're sick? Next time you feel ill and you go to see your doctor, please tell the doctor, Doctor, there's something right with me. I'm sick again. <laughs> Take away the stigma from sickness. When you say there's something wrong with me, that word wrong means failure. We can't be looking after your health. It's your fault. It's not your fault. Part of the body is being sick. So please, the next time any of you go to see the doctor with an illness, please tell them, Doctor, there's something right with me. I'm sick again. <laughs> no, no, no. You must have heard I jumped off. Judge. So there's something right with your friend. They've got schizophrenia. Okay, there's something right with them. Hi, Ajahn. Hi, Raymond. Uh, I've got two questions. First, uh, is, it, is there any drawbacks of being overconfident? Ah, good question. Any drawbacks of being overconfident? No, not really. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and how to deal with your life when uh, you're stuck in a condition that you, you don't really like and what you don't really uh, think of uh, you'll be like in this place? Uh, let's say I'm currently doing a course and I'm accidentally getting this course. So, how to deal with my life uh, and study well if I uh, don't like it and don't love my study? Okay, 